Dear Amelia, of all the things that I thought I would get to do with you in your first year of life, surviving a pandemic was not high on the list. It's been about a week since we started self-isolating. It's definitely preventative at this point. Thankfully, we don't have any of the symptoms, but there's enough facts and data to show that you can still pass on COVID-19, even if you don't think you have it. So we decided that we would be smart and we would stay home as much as possible. Of course, I'm an introvert and I stay home a lot anyway, so it hasn't been that hard. Plus it means I get to stay home with you and not have to take you anywhere, so that's kind of fun too. Pretty much the only way our day-to-day -day life has changed is just that we don't go to church on the weekends and we just stay home as much as possible and only go out for doctor's appointments and uh, Paul does all the grocery shopping. Uh, you, Amelia, are one very lucky girl because your dad is really awesome. Because you will definitely be too young to remember this, hopefully by the time it's over, uh, your Auntie Sarah and I have decided that we would start a video blog or a vlog project to record our thoughts and feelings and just record some of the ways that we are surviving our respective self-isolations. I think the format is that Sarah will do a video one week and I will do a video the next week. We'll try to respond to each other a little bit and yeah. But above all, these will be letters to you, Amelia, because someday you may want to look back and see just what your crazy mom and godmother got up to when they've been home for a long time. Right now I'm reading this book. It's called A History of Britain in 21 Women, and it's written by Jenny Murray. I applaud that last name. She's a Murray like us, so that must mean she's pretty awesome. <laughs> so I picked this one up at Chapters for eight bucks after Christmas, and admittedly this is one of the first books I've read that have been, I don't know, just about a bunch of great women from <laughs> British history. Um, I mean, I've I've read a lot of history books and I've read a lot of books that included both men and women, but I think this is the first one that I've read that just kind of focused on women themselves, uh, which is probably shockingly overdue, but since I'm determined to raise you to be an educated, thoughtful, passionate, intelligent woman, no matter what field you get into, no matter what you do with your life, um, I want you to have role models and examples and to be inspired by people from the past. Um, so I thought, what better way to start planning for that by reading about some great women. Jenny Murray sort of picked from a range of women for, to cover in this book. I have not finished it, I'm halfway through, but so far I have read about the likes of Fanny Burney, who had breast cancer and survived a mastectomy. In France before there was any sort of painkillers. Yeah, you're not going to forget that experience. There was Caroline Herschel who worked with her brother to discover planets and stars and comets. Uh, Paul and I actually visited the Herschel Museum in Bath last year which was a lot of fun. Uh, Caroline seems to be pretty awesome. One of my favorites so far in this book is about Mary Somerville who was um, a girl who grew up in Scotland and she became a very famous uh, scientist and science writer and translator. She taught herself a lot of things and she seems to be very cool and she just, yeah, she just decided she wanted to learn things so she kept on learning and even when she was married and had babies she got up early and she taught herself math and all these sorts of things. She just seems so cool because she was pretty much entirely self-taught and anything that she didn't know how to teach herself she wrote to the famous scientists of the day and got recommendations from them and she just seems to be pretty cool so I think I'll look up I'll look into her more because uh, yeah yeah she just seems really inspiring and someone that seems pretty cool so and I know I've said that a lot. Uh, there's also Jane Austen in this book and of course Jane Austen is a favorite of mine and a favorite of your grandma's so when you're old enough we will get to introduce you to Jane Austen and that'll be fun. So this book a uh, History of Britain in 21 Women seems to be fairly easy to read. I'm surprised at how quickly I'm getting through it. Uh, the author has a very, I don't know, a very easy to read style. She's very, uh, yeah, I don't know, she's concise. She gives you enough information to pique your interest, to help you want to know more about them. Yeah, so other than that, um, it's kind of weird thinking about how everything, a lot of things are closed down now. I realize since I don't go out a lot anyway, um, it's really hard for me to grasp that yes, 
you know, there's no church services going on, all the restaurants are closed, all the theaters, all the libraries, all that kind of stuff. But, yeah, it's just kind of, I mean, it is what it is, obviously. And I'm glad, I'm really happy that we're taking these measures to get ahead of the game, and I hope that they work. And it's kind of weird thinking that this is the first time in my life that something I can do could actually have that much of an impact on other people's lives. Um, or maybe it's collectively all of us staying home together and self-isolating can really actually save other people's lives. Um, I do know a few people who could actually die if they caught this, who are immunocompromised or going through treatments. And yeah, I, when you know people who could die because of my carelessness, it really brings it home that I need to be very careful. And so far it's just staying home, so it's not that hard. Um, Really, there are people out there who are on the front lines who are doing so much, so much else, like so much more. And so like, I have nothing to complain about because I'm not the one fighting the disease minute by minute, day by day. And the nurses and the doctors and so many people are. So kudos to you guys and we will never forget you. On a side note, this stuffed animal, we called him Fred uh, or Freddy. Uh, we decided that because we named you after Amelia Earhart, every Amelia needs a Fred. And this little guy is named after Fred Noonan, who was the navigator, I think, who flew with Amelia Earhart on her last mission when she disappeared. Um, spoiler alert, if you read board books about Amelia Earhart, you might just cry at the end when it talks about her not returning, because it's really sad. Yes. Your dad and I cry at baby board books now, but that is okay. So, dear future Amelia, I love you very much, and I'm sure you are going to be absolutely brilliant in whatever you do, and I believe in you, and I'm excited to see where God takes you. Um, I'm going to love you no matter what. And I should go get the current version of yourself from upstairs where your daddy is watching you. So, until next time. Stay safe, everyone, and stay home.